Episode 1. It's time to sit on down and sip the tea with the Root Chat, bringing you tonight's Tea of the Week. Gossip from the streets, what's trending, and what's cooking at Chit Chat Chew. Three, two, one. This is the Group Chat with your host, the Travis Webb, Darius Williams, It is the one, the only, represent the biggest all, section all across the world. It is Travis Webb, baby. Welcome back to the group. Yeah. <laughs> Travis, <laughs> please, <laughs> Well, Travis, I just want to know please something. Please and please, and they are don't start to be. I ain't even say nothing yet. How you doing, talking to Troy? What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? It's a good, uh, you know, it's a good Thursday, and I am excited to be here with you guys. So, nothing too much going on with me. You know, last week was Valentine's Day. I went to the cabins. I had a week of vacation. I got to film with you guys, do a little photo shoot, be cute. So, I'm here, and I'm back, and I'm ready to chat. Okay, and speaking of uh, Valentine's Day, what's going on, Diggle Lee Darius? How you doing? <laughs> 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 Come on, diggling. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about, Travis? I'm sorry, I'm confused. I don't get the reference. So I must be in the bottom. Double D. D. I would really love for us to try this again. Anyways, on to the next person. <laughs> What's going on, Curious George? How you doing? Well, Travis, I am doing well, and thank you so much for asking. But what I need to know is, first of all, why are you always opening the show? And then, why are you first in the credits? Well, you know, um, in the Bible, it That's says, you know, I was born, and yet that I'll be born again. That's in the book of Travis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you always laughing. What you be laughing at? Because I'll be confused. I'll be trying to laugh, too. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a jolly person. I I'm full of laughter. Oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> That's but since Darius well, there... want me to give him another reintroduction, how, yeah. how are you doing, Darius Williams? Now, see, I like that, Travis. Something with a little class about yourself. I knew that you could do it. I knew okay. it was inside of you. It's so great to be back for another week, child. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh -huh. thank you for being here. Anywho, um, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, George? <laughs> the, he, he got a nasty attitude, and I don't know what it's about, but we're not doing that tonight. We're just going down. Travis. You're going down. Darius, are you okay? Because finally, now you on the right team. Not Darius, Troy. Now you on say, the right team. You well, on you the know, right team now, Troy. I'm always so what's right. You know, I don't I don't choose sides. I just jump in where I get, you know, if it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. You know, Travis. Now you see, I, baby, I, the energy is giving, you know, you got something to get off your chest. Okay, because they want a nugget. Because I don't appreciate, you know, I, I went back and I watched the commercials again. And you know, I didn't like how George tried me, how Darius tried me, Troy didn't try me in the commercial, but you know, Darius got people saying my food tastes like slop. George over there <laughs> got people saying my food tastes like slop. He's stealing my right. words of me. Right. It's me. I originate. That was me. And who started that first? And you know, George, now, now Darius got these people saying Travis can't cook. So you know, I got a little first pressure of, with them tonight. First of all, Travis. You didn't create the word me. Me <laughs> was around before you was even existing. Me, honey. me so, started how wait, me wait, wait, said wait. it. Mm -hmm. I will want to hear none of that. Like I see, we will. Okay, What's go. Ahead. I just he need to get me Wi-Fi together because it's right. giving me a mobile. Who Wi-Fi? Uh -huh. Yours. Connected, honey. It's something over there. And let me tell you something. Just because you done moved up like George and Weezy, don't forget where <laughs> you come from. Because I remember when I met you and where you were staying. Oh, that's fine. Talk about it. That's fine. fine. That's fine. Well, it was still gated. <laughs> Go ahead, Darius. No, I do. I do. I went to public school for apologizing. So, Travis, I just want to apologize for saying that your food looked like slop because it tastes like it, too. Oh. <laughs> well, last time I came, Darius, when we came over there, we ate joke cold food that you had the picture with quad cookbook, and that definitely wasn't her recipe. And if it was, shame on her, too. And the last time I came over there, if you don't remember what you said last week, you didn't have no grease. You didn't have no flour. You didn't have no seasoning. All you had was some raw chicken. And when I left, you was full and you had a new fryer. So you need to watch mm -hmm. your mouth when you're talking to me. Thank you. When I get ready, and, and if you don't like it, you don't like it. And what's the and chicken hot, bitch? Gone. 
Oh, Travis, well, you ain't got no ingredients at your house to cook. No, oh, I did. I didn't maybe that's why I ain't been there. I never argue with a bitch that ain't got no vegetable oil in her cabinet about cooking. <laughs> I had somebody have enough. He he had peanut. That wasn't no vegetable oil that you ordered. That was canola oil. I don't even cook with canola oil. Canola that was, that, oil. That would have canola yeah, oil. Canola oil is not healthy. So if that you was cook canola oil, you need to bed. That, that canola okay, oil was inside your bed for your private moments with your man. No, it wasn't. And then to no, it wasn't. You better drink that drink. I am. Well, I got a question. Do y'all got y'all emojis ready and y'all text thread ready for the chat? And do. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's chat because I ain't got time for y'all arguing tonight. Oh, because they want to fight with me. Uh, 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 uh. Let's get into it. We're done building tribes up tonight. <laughs> oh, Everyone build, take a, down. build a bear workshop. Oh, Travis. Build a bear. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Now, what's up? Come on, sell the stick. Now, wait a minute. Hey, don't build a bear. Troy, you're learning. Well, we ain't gonna, we gonna do this fat shaming, honey. I consider myself, you know, no, that's not fully a fat shaming, you know, and I, but you fully, know, in our fully, 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 fully. Travis, calm down because you're really, you're, we really already gave you too much. Are you considered a chub or a fat? That's a general question because I think I'm a chub. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being funny here. There's no fat shaming. I'm a big boy. I give you my answer during commercial break. Come on, take it over. I'm not interested. Be oh, interested. Okay. Well, we're going to jump right. <laughs> we're going to jump right into the chat. Make sure you can send your emojis uh, to the chat and all that good stuff. But start off the week now. Y'all know there's been a lot going on with the DA here in Atlanta, Georgia, and Fulton County. And baby, Miss Fanny Willis has been getting the girls together. Yeah, what's happening is that the, the defense is trying to discredit her and this entire case. Let's just keep it, let's just call it what it is. They're trying to slut shame this woman mm -hmm. and say that she was huffing and buffing and doing what all y'all like to do in y'all private time with this man. And because she had a private relationship with this man, now we have taken the attention from <laughs> this very real case where they tried to steal this election. And now we're talking about whether or not the DA was having sex with a, a, a grown woman having sex with another grown man. That's what we're talking about right now. But I got, I do, I have to ask this question. Was he married during the time she was having sex with him, or was it like an ending relationship? Because watching the Candace, her take on it, she was saying that you know he it came out after he was getting ready to have a divorce after they had said that they had hooked up and all this kind of stuff. So was was he married at the time that they were having sex? Well, I haven't been down to the Supreme Court to to compare the dates that they said that the people started having their private relationship to compare it to when this man separated or divorced his wife. All I know is that the two of them were upfront in documents before the case started that they had been in a private relationship. And once the people started losing their case, they wanted to drag this out of those documents into the front of the court. So I'm not sure um, from my vantage point, it seems like two consenting grown adults had a consensual relationship. Now, whether or not I feel like she should be having a consensual relationship or a non-consensual consensual relationship, whether it's ethical, moral, or legal or not, with someone that is employed by her office, that's one thing. But that has absolutely nothing to do with the Trump the case and yes. the Trump trying to steal the election here in Fulton County. So I, I don't know. I think it's just a lot of noise to try to um, you know, whip the conversation into a different direction. And now we're talking about this lady's innards instead of Trump being down there calling Brad Rathersburg trying to steal the election in Georgia. Uh, uh, Travis, are you here too? I'm here. Because I just want to make sure this is not a uh, Troy and Darius show because I'm a little bit offended. But go ahead, carry on, you two. Um, well, yeah, George, <laughs> George, I was just asking the question. I was going to get to you next, but Darius, I had asked Darius because, you know, Darius is like my political guy. Like he has, he's into the politics. He has the, you know, the things that I want to know. But Darius, George, what's your opinion on this situation? I'm sorry. Uh-uh, now, George, I knew you was going to try to get a little hood with me. That's why I brought my red solo cup today as well, because I knew you was coming this way. Now, George, you got something to say. You ain't never had an issue buttoning in or saying something when you had something to say otherwise. If you want to say something, just say if you have the information, then let us know. So, uh, George, yeah, were I, they in a relationship before or after the marriage? I've already said what I had to say, and I'm not going back on it, but what, what you will know is the next time you want to call me a hood trifling trick from the South, that's pretty much what you said when you showed me that red cup. What you need to tell the people is who got you drinking out of double cups. So give me my flowers while you. I, I just said I said I brought the good shit for you. Now yeah, I can I be classy, know. or I can get a little bit hood. What which one you want tonight? Uh -huh. I like the hood. There he is. What you got to choose right now? I never said 
seen the side of the glass you're showing. I've only only seen red cup, Darius. Oh. So this would be new for me. I guess new car, new personality. Carry on. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Travis, do you have anything to say about because well also, you know, Candace um called Miss Fanny a ghetto superstar because she was in there rolling her neck and she was in there getting the girls together. And I did not like that. I didn't I didn't feel like sh that was necessary for her to say that about another black woman. You know, wow. Candace is the true definition of you can't see for looking. And I'm just gonna leave that right there with her and for her. So if you see it, girl. I would love to sit down and have a conversation with you just about this. Because I just find it so amazing. You can quickly talk about what they build to, you know, to the city or the county or whatever. But you ain't brought up nothing about all the money Trump is going through with his new nights that he's selling. Girl, that is just crazy for me. What you need to be worried about is how Trump going to come up with his money to pay off all these cases he's losing. Let's talk about that. You know, I really don't have too much for Candy Cane Candice. Um, all I can say is that I will continue to treat her as she is, that part that she has in her head. That's all I have to say. And period. And that's where we're going to leave that. I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. Next on the docket, I don't want to say docket, but on the docket, because we have in the chat. Next in the chat is Miss Netta recent video and the controversy around her, them, they, we don't know at this point because she says she's not LGBT, she's not trans, she's not this, she's not that, but the LGBTQ community is the ones that are supporting her. She's being booked at all these LGBTQ events. And it's just like, I'm honestly very tired of supporting people who are not claiming the community that they are a part of or supposedly are a part of. But we're gonna roll the video and then we're gonna get right into it. This is my way. I'm not no transsexual. I ain't no whatever the else community or whatever they got going on. I'm just myself. And if y'all people know me and y'all people from my hometown, y'all would know I never, ever, and still never went outside dressed like no woman. I never and they and when I get my makeup done and stuff here and, and put on my clothes the to do my skits and stuff, nobody ever seen me in public. Girl, confusion. Confusion. <laughs> First confusion. of all, Ms. Netta, let me tell you something. I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna take away your feelings and what you feel and how you feel, honey. If you ain't dressing like a woman, I'ma suppose you're dressing like a man. Anyway, when you got in public with your fingernail gone. Now I did want to offer you an apology today because I did talk about you and your little two inch Usher heels last week. But girl, you're getting worse and worse. But this is the this is this is this is a great example of what we see when people go viral on social media. And I think it's at a place where we want to come back down to reality from a humble place. Um, but girl, who am I? Okay, who am I? And also, I, I want to say another thing. You know, Miss Netta, we got to look at the source. I ain't saying she ain't all rap type, but I don't think it's all right with the buttermilk. But I mean, that's just what, <laughs> that's just what I feel. <laughs> that's just what I feel and what I think. I think she needs to, you know, come off her, her horse uh, for just a second, come on back down to reality. Um, but I will say, you know, we, 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 I, maybe she just don't want to put herself in a box. And maybe she, what is a non-binary? I don't know. It's so much cis man. But that's straight still man, LGBTQ. Black, but, but I, I plus. But, but Troy, she, <clears throat> yeah, that's all, just a point of correction. Miss Netta never said that she doesn't identify with the LGBTQ spectrum. What she said was that she does not identify as trans or transsexual, which I think is an outdated term. I'm not a person of trans experience. So please, uh, you know, bear with us as we try to have this conversation. But the the bigger issue, I think, I think there are a few things at play. I think that for Ms. Netta to openly call themselves a, a transgender person, like that opens up a different level of vulnerability with that person to identify with being trans, right? Because now I think that it's our responsibility to allow people to tell us how they identify. And mm -hmm. I don't think that she said she doesn't identify as a part of the spectrum. She said she didn't identify as a trans or transsexual, et cetera. But on an interview a couple of weeks ago with T.S. Madison and a couple of other people, she did say that she was not a naturally born woman or something along the lines of, um, being the same as T.S. Madison. You're part of the LBGTQIA community? I didn't quite understand you, but yes, I am. Right, so what area would you fall under the, in the LBGTQIA community? Are you non-binary, trans? I don't think I'm a transsexual. I don't think I'm a, uh, uh, whatever the other names they got, I don't like calling them, but uh, I don't think I'm none of those. I just more be like myself. She did say that 
she was not a naturally born woman or something along the lines of um, being the same as T.S. Madison. And I don't don't quote me on that. Uh, but there is some nuance to this conversation. And that is correct. But however, in that video that we just watched, she did say, I'm not a transsexual or, or any of that other community that they're trying to put me in. So when she said that, that made me think that she's saying that she wasn't a part of LGBTQ either. And that's where my frustration came in with the situation because we're... Yeah. But you also are doing these interviews and you're also dressed like a woman, a woman. But, and you're also... And you could be androgynous, you could be anything, but that is still a part of our community. So we need to know what, what you are so what we know what to call you and how to address you because... From my Call point of view, and, how, and from and being in, in this community myself, and being in this community as long as I've been in it, and learning as much as I've learned, you address someone as what they look like until they tell you otherwise. Mm -hmm. And now it's saying you're not this. So, so what? What is Mrs. Netta? How how are we calling you Miss, and you're not a woman? I mean, I, I want to hear it. your comments real quick. Sorry, yeah. George. Yeah. Um. What I will say, you know, I'm gonna respect her as her pronoun. So she wanna go by he, she, they, it, whatever she wants to go by. We'll respect that. But just like Troy said, it is a little bit confusing because I'm trying to figure out. I wanna be respectful to you because I do like you, Miss Netta. But are you a drag queen? Are you just saying that That's when right. you're putting on your makeup and your wig and your lashes and your kitten heels and your little peepaw blue jean dress. Are you saying that you are a drag queen and you're just doing that for drag purposes and that's a character that you're playing? Or what are you doing? And you saying that people never seen you like that in public. Um, Baby, newsflash, we don't see you at the market, the Kroger's, at these meet and greets, at these fried chicken joints, your, your nails, your makeup with your hair bumps. We don't see all of that. So what are you, Miss Netta? And you didn't come down your high horse. You, I, I know you got a little fame and you don't got a little a couple dollars in your pocket and you probably don't got off EBT, no disrespect. Um, You can pass the card over here to me. Um, but you getting a little too high horse and I think what's going to humble her down is when Charles leave her and I'm saying that out of love you better calm down a little bit because as soon as Charles leave you then you're going to be wanting to come back and be cool with us but you're spending too much time arguing with us you spend too mm -hmm. much time addressing everything you're spending too much time indulging into the negativity when you need to be focused on the reason why we love you and that was because you was a positive whatever you want to be and you was somebody that we look forward to watching the videos. Now, every time I see you scroll, 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 one minute I like you, the next minute I don't. Just shut up, goddammit. In other words, Miss Natalie, that's what everybody <laughs> yeah. wants to get up. Shut your ass up some damn time. You ain't got to respond to every damn thing. Be Beyonce and put everybody on mute and put your ass on mute. What it sound like we saying to you, Miss Netta, girl, stick to the script. Get out of politics, because clearly, honey, there is a lack of understanding on your end about the community. And we can see it, we feel it, because girl, you was just over at the funeral home talking about Steve, yo, your funeral home ready or something like that. Miss Natter, listen, girl, do not get black, what is it called? Black ball here. We do not want to disown you in the community. Girl, so stick to the scripts, come out of the politics, because it is clear that you are not educated. And I mean that respectfully. You're not educated enough to talk about what you're talking about because it ain't making no damn sense. So go on back at that table with that silk lingerie on and yell at Charles that his damn plate is ready. So are we saying when we see her in public, and this is an honest question, I'm not being funny. So when we see her in public and she's dressed like a man, do we call her Joe? No, you just call her Netta. Hey, what's up, Netta, Netta? Because she says she don't see herself as a she. So why are we saying Mrs. Just, Netta? Just say, so when we up, see Netta? her in person and she's not dressed as Miss Netta, should we call her Joe? So that is her government name is Joe. So when we see Miss <laughs> Netta as Joe, are we calling them Joe? And when we see Miss Netta, are we calling her Miss Netta? I just need to know these things. So Ms. Netta or Joe, whichever one you are right now, if you're watching, and I know you should be by now, can you let us know below which one we should call you when we see you in public? And I'm saying that respectfully and out of love. Should we call you Joe when we see you at the grocery store and you don't look like Ms. Netta? Or should we call you Ms. Netta even when you look like Joe? That's all I want to know. Well, okay. I ain't never, we ain't never seen <laughs> Joe, so we don't really know how Joe looks. But we know how Ms. Joe's Netta Joe's the one looks, frying the so food up. I was introduced to her as Ms. Netta. So when we see her, just be like, hey, what's up, Netta? I mean, I know, I mean, Netta and Charles, that's not. Okay, so. Uh, I, I, before, I before we go too deep into a rabbit hole, we can go on to the next topic. <laughs> I ain't gonna get canceled before we get started, period. Okay, now, Tommy and Portia. Now, you know, we just was so happy last week that Portia is back on Housewives, but I'm not surprised that now there is a scandal out about Portia's husband, 
and Simon, you know, saying that he was denied his uh, his citizenship here in the U.S. again. Um, and he's been going back and forth for all these years. I didn't know anything about this un up until now. Um, you know, it said that he had a six month citizenship back in the 80s or somewhere along those lines. And then he left the country in the middle of that and then got rewarded another one, came back, left the country early again, and then now he's had all these marriages and all these kind of things that where they were saying that the marriages seemed fake because he was just trying to get citizenship here in the U.S. And then now he's married to Portia, and it's just I'm, in the words of Nene, I'm tired. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just really tired. Girl, they say Charles, not even Charles. <laughs> Charles, I'm sorry. Netta and Charles, I'm sorry. What's his man name? Simon? Yeah. yeah. Listen, I love Portia Down, and I'm excited to see her returning to, uh, you know, the housewife. But it's apparently that I, I, freaking fraud. <laughs> I mean, the, the girls say, like, "Oh, not the EP. Internet not working." Do y'all see what I see? Doo -doo -doo. We're sorry. <laughs> Service oh. disconnected. Anyway, we can move on. Like he was never here. <laughs> but they said. They saying that you know he's full of fraud. I don't allegedly. Let me be. Let me be very clear. Because allegedly, my God, yes. Allegedly, they say he's completed. He's done so much fraud here in the U.S. But you know you can't have your your nose out there doing hood reporting. So I'm just gonna just sit back on this one and see how this pans out. Because what we do know is that social media, the internet, etc., can conjure up a lot of different things. I don't know if these you know. But there are court documents, George. A true. Okay, see, I haven't really got that much into it. So all I'm going to say is, Portia girl, hopefully you sign the prenup and you collecting your coins and putting a little on the side because it looks like you're probably going to be needing mm -hmm. it. But I love you down, Porsche, and I can't wait to see you. What's up, What's up, Darius? What's the name? Portia sure know how to choose them, child. That's that's all I can say. <laughs> Portia showed our girl sure know how to choose them. We went from Cordell, who was allegedly housing her as a beard and kicked out and and left her broken penniless to sleep on her mama couch and then she went from Cordell to Todd the one that she wanted the baby not with and he looked like he had the IQ of a donob and <laughs> I said that she could procreate with that young man and then she went to the hot dog king who had 50 11 women names uh, tattooed on him and who was apparently slinging his hot dogs allegedly across the city of Atlanta not just once in the factory and now you end up with Simon who you caught a lot of flack for having dated after filming a show with his ex-wife um, and y'all being friendly on the show. And now for all of this to come out right before you come back onto this show. I just, it's going to yeah. be a good storyline. It's going to be a good storyline. Story and baby, and one thing about 16. it, they, they paid my girl a good coin for this uh -huh. because they, she knew he's this 16. was coming and they said, girl, give give Portia the check because she has what we need for the next season and he's right. Yeah. Sweet 16, baby. Sweet 16. Travis, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. That was actually um, Simon. That was him calling me. He was like, I don't know what y'all were there talking about. Uh, I ain't in with none of that. All I know is I'm just going to be stuck here. So I married Portia allegedly so I can stick here. That's his plan. I just got the phone with Simon. Simon just over there, okay? Allegedly, he just over there, okay? So I don't know what trick they got going on, but y'all better calm down with Simon. And also, side note, I like Simon. And to be honest, I feel like allegedly, I feel like Sheree went to Bravo. I think she digged this up because Sheree trying to secure her peach because it hasn't been secured yet. She's okay. up there trying to secure it. And she's like, hey, Bravo, this is what I heard about Simon. I know Portia and Simon have been married for a little minute now, but this is the tea. Y'all pay her all that money to make her extra wealth and y'all still paying me pennies. This is what happened. I'm going to be the bone carrier this season. And I'm going back to Portia and I'm going back to Bravo and tell her all her business so y'all can bring me back. This was a scheme that Charade set up Allegedly. to come with Bravo and Simon and Portia with the booty. Well, I ain't gonna talk on that because Charade, my client girl, I can't worry about it. I don't know, but I know one thing. They used to have some. Hey, y'all ever been to Simon's, the restaurant that was on, um, right there on the uh, Juniper? No, they, yeah, I have not. They used to have some bang bang shrimp tacos over there, y'all. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> at, at a Moscow Mule on a Friday at, at, at five o'clock during happy hour. Jesus. Now, Simon, while you was running around defrauding the banks and defrauding the credit cards, if that's what it took for you to fry up them bang bang shrimps, baby, go to fry some more because we need I need them shrimp back in my life. Oh, baby. Who said that? He had a restaurant. Who had it saying yeah, that? Yeah, Simon is across from Seavis on uh Pines. Now it's just, I mean on um Juniper. Now it's the steak market. Show enough. Show yes, enough. Mm -hmm. Show enough. Show enough. That's that's facts right there. I ain't that was my happy hour every Friday. But let me say this now. 
you know, they do pay the girls a good coin to um get married for them citizenship. So if Portia did want, like I said, one thing about a cancer child, girl, we we in what we gotta fit in. You know, we just want some love. So if we gotta get paid for the love, we just don't get paid for the love. Okay, do, do your man know that Troy? Um, I ain't waiting Troy for the man. money. Hold on, Troy man ain't a citizen. <laughs> yes, he is. A He's from Jamaica, but he is a I'm citizen. Gone. Call, but... me <laughs> Call me later, honey. <laughs> Troy, what you conjuring up over there? Not Troy, I didn't know you was talking to somebody from the United Nations now. I didn't know you was a no type like that. I'm not that girl. I, uh, I am I am I have an uh, actual relationship and he is an actual US citizen flying across the country. You can't worry about it. Anything, any any other questions, George or Darius, since y'all want to come for me? Because don't make me dig up into you guys, men. No, just wait a minute, okay? Oh, Troy, but don't, don't get, don't get stupid. Okay, don't hey, get stupid. You don't want to because you the one was running around saying we are the world, we are the people, we are the children. <laughs> okay, that ain't got nothing to do with us. And we we happy for you. Congratulations, you're winning. Oh, yes. Tonight. Yes. Tonight. You are. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, we gonna go on to the next topic. Since we are talking about housewives, we have former housewife the HBIC, Miss Lanithia Leakes. Her son, Bryce, is <laughs> being sued for 30K in alleged unpaid child support, and his ex wants him thrown in jail. Now, you know the system has a lot of black people in there already we don't want another black man in prison um yes, baby, we do. one one thing yes, about it do. if you ain't pay, if you ain't taking care of your children there is a place for you and who am i to say that he don't deserve to be in jail for not taking care of his child especially and i don't know maybe nene said she washed her hands with a child this this up to you i'm gonna let you handle your own situation i know i got the coin for it but baby i'm gonna let you handle it yourself because at the end of the day, this is not my problem this is yours so i don't know what y'all feel uh-uh uh 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 uh. See, I blame the I'm gonna get the um him next, Trice, but I blame I blame the baby mama. This is y'all problem, baby mamas. When y'all see these celebrity kids, just because they mama and daddy a celebrity and got money does not mean that child has money. That child is a grown adult, and just like Nene said, she raised him to do the best and be the very best, and he ain't being the best, and he got no money. So that's your fault too. You thought that just because you was trying to have sex and get pregnant by a leaks you thought that money's gonna leak over to your bank account but baby ain't leaked over there yet now bryson mm -hmm. you wrong if this is true if you have not paid that child support for that baby you is dead ass wrong let's get mm -hmm. a dna test let's make sure that baby is yours because don't look like you and don't look like the mama either if i'm being honest let's get a dna mm -hmm. test let's find your job burger king high popeye's high and hell even walmart high because every time i go in there ain't no cash is in there so that's a free job for you they paying all right i'm sure in there so go ahead and get your ass in there start working down that down down that coming out with a payment plan, go to cash bands, get your payday loan so you can get some more money. <laughs> yeah, uh, then don't call your mom because your mom already done bought your house. Or you can go sell that house, get that money for that, move to a apartment, pay her off. But baby mom and Bryson, y'all both wrong. And Nene, if I was you, I know that's your grandchild. I know you want your grandchild to be great, but don't pay a dime on that. Blame that on your son who you taught to do the very best and be the very best. Okay. okay. Even a broke clock is right twice a day. And I'm just going to echo your sentiments. And, and this is what I'm going to say. Um, first of all, this is the same mother, the same mother of Nene's grandchild who went public a couple of years ago to bash Nene in an interview saying that, oh, the money changed her and she's not a great person and all these different things. Why would I dig down into my Zeus, uh, baddest reunion checkbook and <laughs> Nene, my natural backing for your child? If you want to talk junk about my child and me, why am I going to take care of you and your child? You figure it out. However... I do think that as a father, as a man, it is Nini's son's responsibility. And I hate that we, we even talk about Nini in this whole situation. It is Bryson's responsibility as a man to take care of his child. That is not Nini's responsibility. If she decides to send the baby a toy, a Easter card, or a Valentine, that is her prerogative. But you don't get to have it both ways. You don't get to go online and ask somebody out and then expect that that person is also going to assist you when you're not able to take care of your child and your responsibility. Period. To totally agree. Totally agree with you. And to Bryson, because you want to lay it down and spread it wide, let me tell you something. The reason I said yes to the jail thing that Troy was saying, because any man that brings a child into this world and refuses to financially, mentally, spiritually, emotionally love on that child and raise that child to be the very best and to uh -huh. do the very best, Shame on you. And if you cannot take care of those responsibilities, you should not have been there moaning and groaning. And for that, you are Shame sentenced on to you. the slammer. You are sentenced to the slammer. And, and I'm just a firm believer on that. You know why I never had kids? Because I knew they was expensive. 
Not mm-hmm. because I live, you know, I, I, I'm an openly gay male. I just understood, and you may call it selfish. I understood that at the age that I was, that the money that I made could not afford me and a child. I knew that. And Period. you can't be that stupid not to wrap it up and, you know, cover yourself up or keep it in your pants. So I say to you, my brother, I say to you, my brother, if you ain't going to pay it, you're going to the slammer. And that's Period. what you need to be. And, and I, do have, a, and I, have, I have a question, an honest question. And somebody, I hope somebody dares maybe you can ask this question for me. Okay, put him in jail. I'm not giving him. Travis, you're going to have to come back later. You guys coming over the weekend. <laughs> I'm gonna upgrade all of y'all's Wi-Fi. We gonna have oh, to no, my Wi-Fi is good, baby. Don't upgrade me. It's it's okay, Troy. It could be a little better. <laughs> I'm not even on Wi-Fi, baby. That's the thing. Oh, so that's what it is. Okay, Travis. Very trouble. Go ahead. Travis, go ahead with your question, babes. Do you want me to ask it again? Yeah. We never heard okay, it. This is, we all do. <laughs> okay, well, this is an honest question. This is an honest question. Maybe, Darius, you can answer this question. Putting him in jail, what is that going to solve? Because not, when not he gets out of jail, he's still going to have to pay the child support unless the not jail will give a percentage of the child support for him serving time. You're right, Travis. It's not. It's not. And I, I don't think that I don't believe in jail um, as a penalty or a consequence for men not paying their child support. But you do need to garnish those wages and you do need Definitely. to make sure that, you know, they are in a, a position that they're having to work. Um, I don't know that I would put them in jail. It does not help anything. But yeah, garnish those wages. Absolutely. I mean, but what if, if you ain't got no wages, how do we hold, and this can be for a man or a woman, because I know women that are on child support. How do you hold them accountable? If they don't have a wage, if they don't have a W-2 or a 1099 to file where the state can collect off of those income, just imagine filing taxes and they take your oh, But you Blur that. But if he don't have nothing to garnish how do you hold him accountable if and you put that ass in jail and you let him sit in there for 365 days out of the year depending on the year if it's a leap year sit his ass in there and let him go through the process and hopefully when he gets out he as travis said he'll run over there to walmart he'll run over there to kroger's he'll run over there to instacart he'll run over there to anywhere to find a job to take care of this child but and I'm going to agree with you, George. Alex. I'm going to agree with you, George, because at the end of the day, I, like I said, I don't want another black man in prison or in jail. But however, there's no other way to hold you accountable because they can give you a certain amount of time to get a job. But in that time, if you don't get a job, then they're going to put you in jail anyway. So it's like you might as well go ahead and try to do the right thing on your own before you even have to get into the system. Because once you're in the system, you're in it and it's just going to be that. So, mm-hmm. I, George, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I'm with you when you're right. I, I hear what y'all are saying. I, I do hear. I do hear what y'all are saying. I understand the frustration. I Listen, I was raised in a household with a daddy who didn't make his child support payments when he was supposed to make them. At the same time, him being in jail doesn't solve anything. And then it really adds another issue because you're saying like, oh, let him go sit in jail for a year. And then when he get out, that'll encourage him to get a job. Now he has to face trying to get a job as a, a convicted person who's served time in jail. Like that doesn't help. It doesn't help. At the end of the day, if you don't have wages that can be garnished, then that means you can't even take care of yourself. So how could I expect you to take care of a kid? That's when the government steps in with these good tax dollars that we're paying and they assist the parent will take care of the child. I don't think that I do. I do agree. Every person should take care of their children. But there also comes a point in time where you have to acknowledge that as a person, I made a decision to be a parent. And with this person, I, with this person. And if this person is not able to help you take care of your child, I completely empathize. I completely sympathize, but you just got to make it happen. And if that means going to get you some food stamp, going to get you some wick, going in, you know, getting you some some type of assistance, then you do what you got to do. But I don't think that putting a man in jail is the right solution for someone not being able to make. Now, if they're, they, they have a job and they're not making the payments just because they don't want to, then you garnish your wages. But if they're not making the payments because they don't have wages to be garnished, then why are we putting them in jail? It doesn't I make mean- sense. Listen, I don't want to carry this on too much longer because I can see Troy looking at his clock. But I do want to say this. <laughs> I, I hear your call out. I hear your call out, Darius. This hits home personally for me because I have sisters that I will not name yeah. um, that are in those situations um, or have been in those situations with the father of their kids. And so I'm very passionate about that I because there's been several times that I had to step and play financially and help take care of them while they're just out rolling, roaming the street. 
And it just blows my mind that a man or a woman can bring a child in this world and have no care for yeah. a life that you created. So I'm very passionate and I'm very harsh about that penalty. And I feel like if you can't get it done in freedom, take your ass to jail. And on that note, Troy, I'm going to turn it back over to you. And y'all might eat me up on the comments about it and I am okay with that. But damn it, that makes me mad. I feel like they're going to kill George, but you know what? Whatever y'all eating, I hope y'all getting full. Period. I like that. Well, on that note, we're going to go right back on down into the chat because I got something else to talk about, y'all, because we almost done. Now, how do you guys feel about songwriters getting their publishings and getting their due diligence when they're writing for these artists and some of these big name artists are not getting... you I mean, are not giving these songwriters their credit on their songs or for what they've done. Almost every record that I have done, I have written when the artist was not in the room. When I think about my own career and all the people that have fucked me over, it's been my own people. Because those are the opportunities I had to work with my people. People's splits still aren't done. People still aren't getting paid. People still aren't being seen. People still aren't being heard. People are still being silenced. People are still under NDAs and some more shit. While Jay Z's up there on Sunday talking about why it's not fair, Beyonce don't got a Grammy for album of the year. Well, baby, we know we can't say nothing about Beyonce. They they go drag, they go be on her, they go be on her bandwagon for the other three. But baby, once they come out with once she said Beyonce name, here come the bees <laughs> trying to you know. Well, I'm a bar. You know you can't touch Beyonce. You can everybody else. They are amen. But when it get down to Beyonce, touching out my anointed. <laughs> so my prayers go out to her and, and do my problems no harm. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, what I will say is, uh, and I'm I say this out of love, and I'm not saying this because it's no secret I do work for Tamar Braxton. Okay, but I'm saying this out of love towards Tiffany. It's no one's fault other than you, my love, my sweet baby. It's nobody's fault but yourself. When you write those songs and you sell those songs and whatever agreement that you have up front, and you and they purchase them songs, that becomes theirs. Okay, so whatever happens after that, if the song blows up and they decide to change the lyrics to do anything to that song, they don't owe you credit at all because once you sell that and you sell the rights to that song it becomes theirs so you need to go back and do your business and handle your paperwork up front if you want those accolades and some type of percentage that goes back on you tiffany red and it also goes back to any other songwriters that didn't negotiate and do their contracts right so you can't get mad if you don't feel that they're giving the proper acknowledgement and all that stuff because that's not the case and that's not true that's all i have to say about that i'm gonna say this and, sure and travis I'm going to say this. I am in the Beehive. I sit on the executive board of directors. I am a barb. I'm in the Navy. I am a diehard Tay Martian, okay? With all of that being said, I'm huge fans of all of these works that the people have put out there. But I feel like the message that Tiffany was trying to share has been, like, misconstrued to be something different. What she has said is that in terms of the publishing rights, which if you look at what publishing rights is, those are rights that go to the songwriter saying that I wrote this work of art. I wrote this song. This is the song that I've written. Because of the way that the machine works, the person who is performing the song wants a portion of the publishing rights as well. So she said up to 20%, like Beyonce might get 20% publishing rights on a song that Beyonce never wrote. And the issue comes in when you have big machines saying, well, if you don't want to negotiate for us to have any of the publishing rights, then we're not going to work with you. So that's where the bullying, I think, and like the kind of is the industry standard. This is what they do across the industry. I think her plea was for big name people like Beyonce to say, hey, you know, I know this is how we do things, but is this right? Is this OK? And when you look at the industry, when you look at the writers being on strike um, with uh, like Stag Afra and, you know, with the, the space that they're in. And when you look at people talking about just royalties in general, and we'll talk a little bit about that more in just a moment. I think what she's saying is. Is, is what we do, it is what we do, but is it right? Is this how it should go? And I don't think that's how it should go. You should get your portion for what you've done. If you didn't write the song, then you shouldn't get any credit for writing the song. If you perform the song, then you should get the credit for performing the song. You should get the credit for recording the song. Everyone should get the credit for the portion that they contributed to the project. But if you did not write the song, then I don't think you should have any publishing rights to the song. 
And see, I get that, but what I'm saying is, up front, you need to make sure, and this is a, a life lesson for anybody, even yeah. outside the music industry. I even took this as a lesson because I had to learn this the hard way years ago. You have to handle your business when it comes down to these documents and what you sign. You have to handle it right. And if you don't understand that country that you're signing, you need to get make sure you get somebody in place, a lawyer, i.e. a lawyer, or somebody that's been in the industry to help you read over this stuff. Because once you sign them papers and it's dotted line and it's notarized and all that stuff, you can't get mad if you didn't handle your business up front. And that's what it and, sounds like, in my opinion, that she handled her business he, wrong. And I think he understands that. And I think that's what he said. He like he yeah. gets that part. But at the end of the okay. day, is it is it correct that you are even not in a position to yeah. negotiate for this, right? Right. Why shouldn't I have to negotiate the publishing on a song that I wrote by myself? Why should I even be in a have place to, when I have to negotiate? Yes. Be considered by a Beyonce, and and I think she even <laughs> mentioned that she didn't even she doesn't even work with a person like Beyonce because she's not going for that. You know, like I understand when I'm getting a job if I sign on the dotted line and they say I'm making forty four thousand dollars to teach every year. I know that this is what I'm signing up to do because that's what I signed on dotted line to do. Is it right that I'm getting paid forty four thousand dollars to be a teacher? No, no. but this is what Hell no. up again. You know what I mean? But I, I think that's the message that's getting lost in this whole thing. But then why accept yeah. the job? Because well, I got to feed my kids. Well, we get that, but if you know that you're going to go through all this turbulence and all this stuff, and you already know you don't agree to something, don't accept the job. Go find a different one. But but, but Travis, Travis, hold Travis on. you have hold to on. you have to hold be you, you you think about it this way though. It's just like. Sometimes people have to do things they have to do to put money yeah, on the table. Like it may not be things that we agree with, but it's just like Taraji B. Henson. Yes, she may not have agreed with a lot of things, just like Monique. They may have not agreed with a lot of things in these contracts, but at some point, once you get to a certain level and you've made a certain amount, you can begin to speak out on these things because it's just like, look, I've done the work, I've taken the backhanded credit, I've taken all the things backhand. Now it's time for me to stand up for what's right because with the people coming forth and coming after me, I want them to, do, to get the due diligence that they are owed. Because guess what? If that was us four sitting here and somebody came to us with a deal and said, oh well I'm going to give y'all a million dollars and y'all got to split it between four but then we look at people on the view and they're getting a million dollars individually that's not going to sit right for all of us because it's like we're doing the same job that they're doing so you can't say that you have to not take whatever because sometimes people have to take what they have to take in order to pay the bills if you delight this one in their house so you you, you, you I, I can't see you being not thinking about the whole bigger picture. I don't want to say gullible or saying that anything like that, but I don't. I can't see you not thinking higher than what you're thinking right now. But I, you know, I, 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 I we're gonna have to agree, 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 disagree on that, baby. We're I, gonna have to I agree with you on this, Travis. Mm -hmm. What's legally binding is legally binding. Period. Hard stop. This is what I signed up to do. But just because something is legal does not mean it is moral or ethical or right. And I think that's when critical thinking skills have to come in place. And I think a lot of times what ends up being lost on the general public is when people come out expecting us to resonate with this, all we see is, baby, you making tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars, so you should be satisfied with what you have because it's what you signed up to get. But does that make it right in the grand scheme of things? It doesn't, in my opinion. Right, right? and I'm not saying that it makes it right or anything, but when do we actually take the time and be, who's going to be the person to say, you know what, you paying me $10 an hour, I'm not going to accept this job. Who's going to actually be the person to actually stand up and deal, and deal with it? Monique. And actually that's be the person Monique that's going to be the right number person to that's say what, something about it. That's what Monique is doing right now. And right. what we have to understand, and Troy, you know, I'm really liking you tonight, and that's shocking, but I really agree <laughs> with everything, <laughs> I really agree with everything you just said, because you have to think about it, in that moment, you're thinking about livelihood, how can I survive, how can I provide food on the table for me and my family, how can I pay my bills, how can I do this, and how can I do that, to Darius' point, that piece of paper is a legal document, so it you is. signed it, right? That's what you signed up for. You accepted it. However, once you're in it, you're now learning, developing. You're becoming more aware of what the business is and what the process is. So now you're starting to speak out. Yeah, I made a dumb decision when I signed with that pen. Hopefully it was in black. It was a very dumb decision. But here I am today and I can talk about it. And I think what you just said, Travis, and I, you hit the bullet on the head. And I hope we can get Monique up here. What you just said is exactly what Monique is doing. She's speaking out on this is not right. How does this person deserve 40 million to do a spinoff and then you only offer me 10 million? That's just the number I pulled from the sky. But this is what Monique is preaching and talking about. And if we get more people on Monique's team to push this narrative, not even narratives, but to push this fact of what she's talking about, we'll see a different outcome in the industry just in general. You're right. And that's just dead on that. And I'm going to stand on it.
Yeah, because because you know what ends up happening, and we talk about like, okay, well, I'm gonna turn down the ten dollars an hour, but guess what? This young baby over here who's just getting started out, they're gonna accept that. You know what I mean? And so we never break this cycle of this being the industry standard. And right. I think that's what I think. If we take away the artists that she mentioned, which is always hard when you start naming people, if we take away the artist names who are mentioned, and we just look at the facts and say, okay, this is how things are working. Is this right? If a big main person will not take the opportunity somebody who's trying to get their foot in the door is going to take the opportunity because somebody that's well known who is okay with it okay with the status quo is going to say yeah girl you keep working hard and then next time you'll have the foot into it negotiate to get 80 percent as opposed to getting 60 percent. but then that day never comes and so it becomes just this cycle of well i'm just going to tell the next person to do it because that's what i had to do to get my foot in the door so you're gonna have to do the same thing but is it right? And I think that's the question that we always have to ask ourselves. But who it is, is it right? And it's not. It's not right. And I'm and Ooh. I'm 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 good with that. And I think we're just gonna leave it there because I'm I'm in my combative stage right now. So we, can we, we go, go to a break? Right? You want to take a break? Give, give me just a second or two. Just give me. Two. Yes, let's take a quick time. break right Damn. here on the group chat oh. now. I know it's heated up here in the chat, but let's take a quick break. Let's the boys get themselves together, and we're gonna come right back here. In the group chat, get your emojis and everything ready and come back and chat with us. <laughs> Promote your business during the episodes of the group chat. Email us at info at mychasereality.com. What's up, you guys? It is the one, the only represent the biggest hall section all across the world. It is Travis. Well, listen, the group chat is now on Sheen Magazine app. Head over now to see exclusive clips, bonus clips, behind the scene clips, all fun things and all things group chat right over on the Sheen Magazine app. Download it right now. Wait, what y'all still watching me? Go ahead and download this code. You download it. We got, we got behind the scenes. Go ahead and download it right now. We love you. <laughs> all right y'all welcome back to the group chat listen i know that moment was a little heated but baby like beyonce said, we about to be back right here in the group chat are right, y'all ready for the next topic guys mm -hmm. let's get right into it now speaking of publishing and rights and things of that nature um one of our very own has been in the blogs recently you know we love this person down but one thing about this person he knows how to work that social media baby mr oliver to wix um it came about on social media. It said, you know, it was a tweet that said, what have you contributed to society? Um, and Oliver said, I created the T.S. Madison sequence, sampled and cozy by Beyonce off the Grammy Award winning album, Renaissance. And once he posted that, the girls got in the comment section and they started asking questions. And one question was, are you getting royalties off of this song? Are you getting paid for this? And he simply said, no. And from there, baby, it has gone everywhere from uh, Tasha K to Armand Wiggins to even the Queen Diva herself, Miss T.S. Madison, getting on live and addressing the issue. If you're an editor for me, you're an editor for me, I pay you to do a service, I paid you that fee right there. If I own my content 100%, you don't own this content with me, I don't owe you any residual anything. Madison at the time, when, when she got Oliver, why he's great at what he does, Oliver wants to be T.S. Madison. The only person that any royalty is owed is T.S. Madison, bitch, for the time that I spent, bitch, coming off of my motherfucking dome because everybody else in between was paid for their services. We thank Oliver for the services that he provided. We've we've thanked we've thanked Oliver in a Grio in a Grio interview. We thank Oliver in the motherfucking in in in, in major publications. Maybe they didn't they take, get the opportunity to read them, but we have thanked him for the service that he contributed in filming and editing that video. We have thanked him for those. And if you don't believe me, the, the footage is out there for you to go watch. We do have someone here on the panel that is, you know, close with Oliver. So we do want to hear, Darius, what is your take on this situation? <laughs> the, how are you going to put Darius over here, Troy? <laughs> I, I just want to hear your take on it because, like, I, I, did, I honestly did not see anything negative Oliver said that may it be warranted that he uh, wanted any publishing rights from it or he wanted anything, you know, any money to be paid for to saying that she didn't pay him I, from what I saw. Um, but, you know, all the blogs in, are saying that, you know, he said that he deserves some, some kind of compensation from it. And did he? Do I think so? Um, 
I would say, yeah, you know, being that it was it was something that he created and he and it was used, you know, something that he made. But, you know, I don't know the logistics of it. So I can't, you know, really sigh. But I do not think I don't think that he did anything malicious or messy in the comments to make it be as big as it is. Troy and Travis, what do y'all think? Uh, I, what, what, what I think is personally, <laughs> I think that um, that's at the end of the day, it is. T.S. Madison's voice. Um, he was hired to do a job, and that was to record, edit graphics. From my understanding, I don't know his job duties, but from my understanding, he was hired to do a particular job. From my understanding, he was paid from doing that particular job, and it should have been left at that. So he had got recognition for it? Absolutely. Yes. Did he get the um, recognition? I'm not quite for sure, so I can't speak on that part. But we're speaking on the logistics of it. He was hired to do a job. He did his job. That is Maddie's voice at the end of the day. From my understanding, I did speak to her, um, so that I went straight to the source. Um, he didn't come up with the lyrics or what for her to say. That was stuff that she came up with to say. Um, she owns T.S. Madison brand. Um, so I just feel as though that he got paid for his services. So I don't think he should benefit, monetize, excuse me, from money-wise, um, what T.S. Madison has gained from Cozy. Do I think he need to get the proper recognition? Absolutely. If I did something like that, I want to get the proper recognition. But I was hired to do a job, and I did my job, and I got paid for that. And I'm going to use me as an example. I edit and do all the graphics and record all the Tamar Brax and stuff on her channel. If it goes viral years later, she don't owe me a dime for that. As long as I get my salary every week, I'm fine. I can't get upset if one of her clips goes viral and it goes on a Beyonce album and all that stuff. Would it be nice to get a check? You're damn right. Yes, it would be nice to get a check. So I'm not saying he don't deserve a check, but if we speak on the logistics of it, I'm just going to use me as an example. I don't, I would like to get a check, but I'm not, required to get a check because that's something I didn't discuss prior. So the recognition, absolutely he need to get recognized. I think T.S. Master has recognized Darius, you that is one of your best friends. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know for sure if he got the proper recognition. He needs to get recognized, but I don't think that what he's saying, it was on the level of negativity or anything towards Maddie or anything. I think what he said was taken out of context and then some of these messy blogs y'all know who y'all are, Trust Curry. Um, some of y'all took this out of context trying to make it a bigger situation than what it actually is. I don't think I he agree. was wrong for what he said. I don't agree. I don't think that Maddie was wrong for what he said. I think it was taken out of context and it became something bigger than it had to be. And I, but also before we go in any further, I do just from the tweet in general, just just leave it, just just going to the tweet and leaving it at the tweet. I think he just wanted, he just put out there something that he was proud of that he helped be a part of. I think that was literally the only thing. So that's just my opinion. And yeah. Darius, what's your thoughts? Well, why, I gotta say, why I gotta say anything? I mean, y'all done said everything that need to be said. I, I don't. Mean... Are you on mute, George? You talking? <laughs> no, I'm just playing to say. Go ahead. <laughs> what I would say. I'll say this. Uh, tra uh, everyone here on the panel knows, and, and most of our viewers knows, that Oliver is one of my very best friends, one of my very close friends. I have not seen Oliver publicly nor privately ask T.S. Madison for a single red cent that she's received for this record. I have not seen Oliver ask or request that his name be anywhere that is not. That's not what I've seen. What I saw my friend say on Twitter, and if we could show it once more, I created the T.S. Madison sequence sampled in Cozy by Beyonce off of the Grammy Award winning album Renaissance. And to that, I say all facts. He created the sequence. Beyonce sampled it for her record. The uh, T.S. Madison was the one who said it. And now it is a Grammy on a Grammy Award winning album or whatever the situation may be. I don't see why uh, I feel like there's a, a concerted effort. Anytime T.S. Madison's name is mentioned, it's always associated with mess. And so because T.S. Madison's name was mentioned in this tweet, people automatically associate it with mess. I think that Oliver and T.S. Madison have a, a very professional and personal relationship. The last I talked to him, which was this morning, Oliver still calling T.S. Madison his, uh, his gay mama. The last I saw Madison on her show this morning, Madison is still saying that she talked to Oliver and Oliver is her gay son. I don't know why people like to sow seeds of dissension amongst people in this way, but that's just a, a reality of what we're dealing with. And I, like I told Oliver, I know that it's difficult, especially when 
people are calling into question your intentions or what you should or should not say. You should be able to say whatever the hell you want to say as long as it's true. But at the end of the day, this is what people do to try to one up someone or like the, the Wiggins guy. I don't know him. I don't know him from a can of paint. It looks like him out of our peers in terms of viewership and following and the things that they do in the space. And for some reason, our mind thought that it was cute for him to go on his a diatribe and just try to paint this narrative of my friend that I thought was completely inappropriate, was unnecessary when he hasn't said anything other than the truth. And we have a clip here of T.S. Madison saying Oliver edited, spliced, put the situation together the way that it was and it ended up being picked up. Why is it an issue for Oliver to say that that was a sequence that he created? Why is it even a conversation? Why does it have to become this messy thing? And I think at its core, it becomes a messy thing because anytime people talk about T.S. Madison and the team of people who have been around her, it is always some negativity. There's always some mess. And I'm so glad that Oliver has been able to have this contribution to Black history, to the moment, to T.S. Madison's career, to Beyonce's project. I'm so glad that my friend has been able to experience that. Um, and I'm so glad that that wasn't the last thing that he's done. And it won't be. It wasn't the first thing. It won't be the last thing that he's done. If he felt like that was a, a high point in his career, who are we to say, oh, well, you can't say that because people might perceive that you wanted something more. Or you didn't get what you were owed. Or you didn't get what you would do. I feel like it's a lot of insecurity, a lot of projecting and deflecting. If people don't feel like you should be able to say what you want to say about something that you're proud of, then that's a reflection on them. That is not a reflection on you. And that's just that on that in the words of George. That's just that on that. And, and can I say and, one more thing, please? Go ahead, Travis. Let, let's ahead. be honest. Let's be completely honest. It's way okay. bigger than Oliver in this particular situation. This has all to do with T.S. Madison and the people that do not like her. Correct. Correct. Um, Tasha K don't like her. So Correct. any little thing that they can find about T.S. Madison that's going to be clickbait. Because let's be honest, T.S. Madison, she is clickbait. Correct. You're going to make a coin off of her. The moment you mention her name in the title, you're going to make a coin. Yes. So whatever they can find on her, they're going to try to twist it and make it negative because they want to put her in a negative light because they, at the end of the day, uh, let's be honest, they are jealous of her. They still sit in their ba they basement, so they back of their yard or wherever they do their filming. Correct. And she keeps it selling and selling and selling. So this is really bigger than Oliver. It boils down to... I, they, they don't like her. I love T.S. Madison. And they if don't I could like take her, they want to go and her. Yeah, if I could take it a step further, because I love T.S. Madison. I watch Maddie in the morning often, mm -hmm. but I also think it is a direct attack on Oliver as well. Like I think that people try to diminish what Oliver has done. I, I feel that. like not T.S. Madison. I think T.S. Madison is very proud. She always champions what he has going on. But I feel like there's an effort within the gay community to little boy and to son Oliver and to make it seem like, well, he's just a messy bitch and, you know, oh, well, he just came up off of this person. He came up off of that person. And it's disappointing because when you watch somebody work as hard as Oliver works, and y'all know that's my best friend. I I, there's no qualms about it. I can say that with no uh, with no ifs and or buts right. about it. My friend works hard. He, he puts does. a level of excellence into everything that he does that begets uh, a placement on Beyonce's album. Whether Beyonce ever put the shit on the album or not, that's the type of dedication and commitment that Oliver puts into his craft. And so yeah. for people, especially people in our community, homosexuals sitting behind a, a MacBook with a camera who just want to go live and have something to talk about, like, it's just so disappointing because get up off your ass and do something else, you know? Like, oh, Oliver just want to be, he want to be in front of the camera and, you know, he's just mad because he did the work, but T.S. get the credit or that's how he looking like, no, get up off your ass and do something other than be messy on YouTube. Okay. Because that's something that we all have the power to do. All of us got a device that goes live on YouTube. And everybody has not been able to, to acclaim some of the things that Oliver has been able to acclaim. And I know he don't need me. And he's probably going to be upset when he see this because he don't even talk like this. But about my best friend, like, relax. Relax. It is what and, it is. They're good. I'm, so shut the hell up. Period. And I'm okay. going to say this and we're going to go. I'm going to say this and we're going to move on. One thing about it, and if you know Oliver Twigs, like I know Oliver Twigs, I've been around him the last five years of my life. This moment is going to be something that he's going to take and create something else from it and make more money from it and put it back in your face to show, like, I'm that bitch and I can take any moment that's negative against me and spin it and make it more than what it is and still monetize off of it. So, shout out to Oliver Twigs, girl, you back in the blouse, you still doing your thing and... It, it, it is what it is. I'm proud and, of you, and keep going. And I'm going to say okay. one more thing, y'all. Get ready to gag next week. How about that? Boop. Period. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go right on to the next topic. We're going to lighten it up a little bit because 
one thing about it, I love this next show that was taken off of TV and it's now coming back. Let me hear y'all say DD4L. DD4L. Yes, Miss D is coming back to yeah. the networks with Dancing Dolls. Let's watch the preview, guys. Star of the hit reality dance show, dance Bring It. Superstars, man. Major at dancing. Her dynamic yet harsh coaching style. Right now, I don't care about they mom. <laughs> This is history. This is where the dance and dog started. Come back home to me. The goal is to make sure y'all don't hurt each other. That's it. You, so you bring up your right up to this. Come back home to me. <laughs> <laughs> He wants to be a video <laughs> artist so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing that mud can so bad. Yeah. What did he say? I don't care about their mama right now. I don't care about their mama right now. Listen, I'm, 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 so ex- like, I'm so excited to see her back on TV. Miss D is, I don't know, like, when I was growing up in college and I didn't have the rhythm or I didn't dance or I didn't really, you know, do all of the things that I do now. Like, I, I know how to shake a little booty and do all that, but Miss D made me want to get in the, yeah, she made me want to get out there and throw a little stand and learn a little move because I didn't know choreo. I didn't know how to do all of that. So I'm so glad to see this. This is a nostalgic moment for me and I'm excited to see her back on the screen. It's coming soon. Hey, Troy. Yes, there is. I mean, George. Uh, Sorry. Are you dancing now? Um, I'm not dancing now, but I will be in the future. Okay. So it ain't hit you yet. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> well, I, almost, I almost got real ghetto and shot a bird to the screen, but I can't do that. <laughs> oh, no, Troy, because the last time I saw you outside, you was bending over, busted wide. That's all I know how to do is bending over, busted wide, and they had to be scared to come outside. And you didn't learn that from Miss D. You learned that straight from uh, Fourth Quarter. Straight about uh, my Vista. Vista. You learned that from my Vista. Is that how it's pronounced? You didn't learn that from, from Dancing with the Dogs. BGC. We gonna go right on to the next topic because he's taking it to he's taking I, it to a place it ain't even gotta be. So, I thought this one was teaching y'all at FAMU. Me too. Ooh. I thought this one I was learning that down at that HBCU. But George, I, you know, I don't know if you had that kind of experience like I did at the HBCU. Well, so let me go ahead. And, let me go ahead and clear where it needs to be clear because I have no shame in my game. I only have you know two years, and I went to a community college, and we didn't have any of that. So let's 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 reel it on back, George. We have none of that at my HBCU either. We weren't doing none of that. Reel it on back. I went to a community college. Her. Really don't back. You, you know what, Darius? I'm not going to talk HBCU. about your HBCU. I appreciate we it, Troy. But thank you. You're and welcome. No, and for that, your ass is going to leave. <laughs> and I, <laughs> we don't know why that's the next topic. Uh, and our last topic of the night is something fun, but I'm glad to talk about it because I really don't care what Uno said. I'm going to still do what I want to do. That's how I'm going to play the game. Oh, that's but right. Uno has said that you cannot stack a draw two on a draw two. I ain't never heard that before when the game came out. I was up there putting the draw two on the draw two, the draw four on the draw four. Like, if you want to keep it going, you just got to keep it going. Whatever card you got in your hand, if it match, it match, put it out. No, so, I, no. What you learn how to play Uno? Because let me tell you something. If I'm next in line and you have four draw twos and you hit me with six draw cards, oh, we fight. We didn't play that back where I'm from. You play one can't. card at a time when it's a, when it's a draw. What are you talking about? I mean, but... It's the same card. It's the same. We're all just a different color. It's the same card. No, no, no. You're two. missing the but point. But my thing. But you're see, missing no. the point. But listen, you're missing. I didn't say, you are missing. No, I'm not missing the point. You're the missing point. what I'm saying because what Let I'm saying you is your you contract put, is no different than mine. And what you're not gonna do is sit on this platform and over talk me when I'm stating the fact. Oh, boy. what I said was go. draw two is a single card. If you have two draw twos in your hand, you can't throw them on me and tell me to draw four. So I asked you where you learn how to play Uno, girl. I oh, learned man. how to play Uno at the daycare back when I was growing up. But I maybe oh, this explains two. a lot. I, I, I maybe misunderstood what it was saying because I thought it was saying like, you know, say, say if you throw out a draw two and the person next to you got a draw two, they can throw out a draw two too. So what's the difference between me having two draw twos in my hands and throwing out both of mine? I would never play Uno. At this point, at this point, I would never play Uno with you. No Uno, no anything, because your way of Uno is totally not my way of Uno. And that's okay. We live in a world where things are done differently. But Troy, here you're wrong. 
I'm just gonna call it. I disagree, oh. Troy. I, I'm with you 100%. Troy, are the well, rules? y'all can go. So can you only put down <laughs> one? No, this is a serious question, George. Can you can I'm you only put down one? Can you only put down one reverse card or one skip card? The directions, <laughs> and I, I'm just so shocked. I'm just so shocked. Answer the question. The question. Well, diverse and educated men. Is and it just we are a, almost forty years old? Is and it just, well, wait a minute about, now. Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm gonna the, 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 di <laughs> the directions <laughs> are the directions. But and George, what I'm not about to do is sit on this platform and talk about how to play Uno when you know the game, you know the rules, and Did you have to play theirs. But is it just for the draw cards? Is that just for the draw cards? What the instructions say? <laughs> no, we don't listen. That's one thing about black people. We don't care about we that. Ain't we ain't that. We got our own game. They can tweet till they blue in the face. We are the tastemakers. We are the culture deciders. We decided a long time ago how you can play Uno, okay? So yeah. we already aren't following the rules that the people put in the packaging in the first place. I just want to know, is that a consistent rule across all cards, or is it just for the draw cards? It should be a consistent rule with all cards. Now, read your directions, because depending on where you bought I'm your card them. deck from, you know, your directions may be different. And it's apparently they have been over. That cup is that cup. It ain't this cup. It, I did lose my trade of thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's that cup. <laughs> yeah. now, I did lose my trade of thought. I'm going to assume Travis did play Uno because he has a little to nothing to say. Um, I no, I have a lot to say. Um, I did play Uno, and I'm confused, just like Darius and Troy is, because why Uno? Why y'all wait to the year 2024? Yes. From my understanding, Uno been around since the early 90s, late 80s. Why y'all just not waited till 2024 to say something when we've been playing 20, 30 years the way we've been playing? Y'all can't be trying to change up the rules at the last minute because everybody gets to fist fights with their fists and their neighbor and doing all this extra stuff. Y'all should have said that back then. Don't come to me next week with a different rule because if I got to keep changing these rules. Every time I play Uno, I ain't playing no more. I go back to tic tac toe, be fine with it. Heads upset. Well, with well to be honest comes... with you, Uno is probably surprised that y'all got so much controversy, uh, controversy no, around what they did. No, no, because if you didn't read the directions then, what no, makes you no. think they think that you was gonna see this right here? I'm gonna tell you, you, know what? you know what? Well, how about this? You know at what? The next, I'm about to go. At the, at the next, go. You can go. I'm at the next one no, on Wednesday, and I'm gonna come to that one. We just know to play Uno amongst us, each other, and leave George out of it. But but no, no, to be no. clear, I've invited you to my home several times for events, and you've never come. So what makes well, you we, think I'm having a Uno party? Well, we, did this time? we all know, we all know my work schedule, man. So mm. I can't worry about it. Well, don't talk, talk about what happened. It'll like, be real late. The food be good, but it do be real late at night with George have his events. Well, George told me last time seven o'clock, and I don't be getting up until eight thirty nine. So I'm we I'm still be there. The, I'm late to the party, and I gotta catch up with y'all drinking, girl. I'm party like that. That's a lot, Troy. Because every time I see you, you got a bottle of coffee. Check your goddamn ID. It's just and, 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 you buy me, and you be buying more shots on top of that. We be drinking together. Can't worry. You're not do that anyway. That's just how oh, I Travis. Am. This is what I would say. Travis, here they go talking about their past. Uno people. got the same spirit that <laughs> bitches like George. Uno got the same spirit that bitches like George got down here in this corner. They they like clickbait. They know that people gonna click on it and people gonna share it and people gonna argue about it. But George, you know what I'm not gonna do today? I'm not gonna dignify your ignorance with an argument. Let's and end this we show. We leave it. Right there. Okay, what right we got? Group chat, guys. This has been hot topics. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you have been in the chat, leaving your emojis and telling us your thoughts. We're gonna take it over to Travis after we take a quick break right here on the group chat. George, take us out. George over there eating cornbread. Bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't playing the Uno with y'all. We'll see y'all in a minute. Okay, we'll see y'all. <laughs> your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. I don't give a fuck. Get the fuck out of here, bitch. This month. I'm not the one who went back and said it. Your friend is the one who said something. The Dallas crew is back. Marquise, the cook. Him and Ashley need to talk about how they fucking. Now she wants to wear underwear. New story. I put so much into you, and I didn't have to. I heal by going through personal things and learning my lesson. Let's make money. You better stop playing with me this head. New drama. You said it was negative. That's in your head. When I'm not even on that bullshit. I'm not on the bullshit. You need to step your bars up. I think it's a little bit of jealousy. I gave you a top song. I'm just stating back. Your problem is that you think you can come into hip hop and do hip hop, but hip hop is black. That's not what I said. That's what I said. Sit back, big girl. And more chase. Let's just chase what we're here to chase and do what we're here to do. Don't chase storyline. 
I'm mentally not in the space and it's so tired of you to choose the next time I come back to be this. That is tired. Chasing Dallas, new season premieres this March, only on Chasing Reality. The season two of the group chat is here and we are bigger and better than ever. We're bringing you the latest tea, gossip, and more with me, Travis Ware, George Sloan, Troy Gaskins, and Darius Williams. You can expect me, you know, still reading Travis down, okay? And you can look forward to seeing Travis in the kitchen whipping up more slop. This season, it's about to be none other than great. And who look like the CEO and president? Me. <laughs> Watch the group chat Thursdays at 8 p.m. on the Chasing Reality YouTube channel. Welcome back to the group chat. <laughs> Guess what, y'all? We're going to step into a new game, honey. I'm ready for this. We've been playing games all night. Now it's time to check these people's smarts out. It's called Guess That Scene. <laughs> Let's see if we can guess the scene. We're going to guess the show, and we're going to guess what um, scene it was, okay? So we're going to guess the show, George, and there's we're going to guess the scene. All right, let's get our first clip up, shall we? Guess what, bitch? When you're a boss, bitch, bitch you, you ain't about your friends to stay with you. You're not a boss, bitch. You ain't your friends to stay with you. This is your fourth Hollywood party, bitch. You ain't a boss. What the fuck wrong with you, huh? I know the scene. Okay, can I go? Is it, is it okay? Because, yes. you know, I am a Chasing Atlanta fanatic. I was watching Chasing Atlanta before I got on Chasing Atlanta when I was in college. And that scene is between the infamous Lauren England um, and Devon at her house warming party at her big mansion. Yes. Bitch, when you're a boss, bitch, you ain't about your friends to stay with you. You ain't about your friends to stay with you. You're not a boss, You ain't about your friends to stay with you. This is your fourth house warming party, bitch. You ain't about What the fuck wrong with you, huh? Wow. Yes. That? I live What's... for that. That was tea. Mm -hmm. Was that that man from that other show? Devon, yes, he was on G7. No, but you know. No, Devon not Devon. No, not Devon, the one sitting on the chair with Lauren. Okay, yeah, yeah he, you know, all the girls started out over here on Chasing It. I saw him with some very interesting eyebrows on another show I was watching. Yes, G-Status. Um, yes, okay. Was this Lauren's man? No. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Member. Okay, okay, okay. I just never seen. I need to go back and watch the, the first couple of episodes. I mean, the I first. I'm gonna say something shady, but this is not the show for that. Okay. Let's run the next one. <laughs> She's reaching. Child. Too much. Yourself, child. They talk about you in Atlanta, girl. Humble. Humble they know you're yourself. original. You're sick. Bitch. They won't. No, Goodbye. you're sick. I'm done. And good night. Because I'm never finna argue with a bitch who got their edge glued down, Ooh. and you can still see the hair missing, and them old whack ass eyebrows. And that horrible ass funeral home makeup on her face. <laughs> well, bitch, it'll be a cold damn hell before you think I get to know about thing. anything you got to say about me. <laughs> oh, I, I can pick me, pick me. This is what Chasing Dallas saw here. Good girl, Miss Joyce is reading. I don't know the scene. I know the scene. It was Mr. Bird and George and Chasing Dallas. They were going back and forth because George said that Mr. Bird, Tedley, aka Tedley, that his makeup was not blending. That was not that scene, but I know that scene. They talk about you in Atlanta, bro. They know you're original. Yourself. You're sick, bitch. They won't. No, Goodbye. you're sick. I'm done. And good night. Because I'm never finna argue with a bitch who got they edge glued down. Ooh. And you can still see the hair missing. And them old whack ass eyebrows. And that horrible ass funeral home makeup on her face. <laughs> well, bitch, it'll be a cold damn hell before you think I give a fuck about anything you got to say about me. I just got one thing to say. I cannot I got believe one I thing. use that type of language. I got one you, thing you, to say. You were very ratchet for that. I love it, though. George, brother, you look goddamn good. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, George, that look good right now. Okay. That haircut was thick. That skin That's was black. The skin was oh. You know what? Let me tell you something. That scene was not made to go that way. It, I, at all, and, and and I want to be clear here, and, and make it edited out. I didn't even want to film that scene that night with him because I knew, I knew how that scene was going to go to an extent, and they had to really talk to me about just please have a conversation with her. And I said, I already know how this scene is going to work. And mind you, I was on, I was in that working, honey. I was in that hosting the red carpet. <laughs> 
backwards. Well, George, that ain't nothing made up. George, you know, I, I like Taylor. I like Taylor. I feel like we should bring him over and just have y'all like just, you know, like, you know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Casey Thomas is coming back. I think it'll be a good opportunity. Me too. I think it'll be a good Bury the beef. Yeah, but there's no beef. There's nothing to bury. There's nothing. There, there's no issue. There's no issue on my end. You know, for me, baby, I, I I do what I do. I have the situation. The situation is what it is, and I move on. I can walk into a room and you know blend into the paint on the wall. I don't see you. And I'm not even talking about on that on that situation. In general, I'm talking about in general. Yeah. Like once I'm done with something, I'm done with it. And because I'm not hungry or looking for attention, I don't have to carry stuff years and years. And years. I'm done. If you notice, there are people who I have gotten into it with on this show or on that platform to this day still speak about me in interviews or still put shit on social media or still have something to say about me. I don't talk. I, I think you should talk to him about it because, you know, you're going on and on right now about it. So I think y'all should be. Troy, talking. now that's what you're not going to do, Troy. What you're not going to do is say I'm going on and on about anything. I'm just playing, George. Yeah, just well, take, we'll leave that on the playground. Leave that playing on the playground. <laughs> I love you. Well, Nathan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he speak my name? I'm going to ask Obama to run you over. Mine's you can't run me over. You're in the way traffic. Move, Fred Hammond. That's not a good person. For real, y'all. Like, for real. And you better be careful. And you better be careful. I know that scene, too. There you go. This was the night that I met Troy and Travis Messy Asses for the very first time. Yeah. This was Troy's Christmas party. Um. <laughs> Up there in the Phoenix Springs. You said what? Up there at the Phoenix Springs. Uh -huh. Up in the Phoenix Springs. This is our second stop for the night. Me and Oliver have been having drinks. Us back and my friends said, hey, I call it alcoholic beverages. This is my last car with um Travis and, and Oliver. Travis was doing the most that night, y'all. Listen, let me tell y'all. I never met this man a day in my life. He didn't have a goddamn thing to do with nothing that was going on. He he that was his first time around a group, but Travis wanted to insert himself in every single situation that was going on. I was and doing that's why Travis and what I was told to do. I need oh, so to keep speaking my name. Mine's cars, mine's mine's cars, and cars. You can't run me over. You're in the way traffic. Move, Fred Hammond. Fred Hammond. That's not a good person. Like, for real, y'all. Like, for real. And you better be careful. Oh, call me later. <laughs> <laughs> That's my old car. Now I'm going to kick it somebody. That's my old car. Call me later. Okay. <laughs> can I tell y'all a funny, something funny we never talked about before? Oh, my God. Okay, so when I came in that night, I was dressing all black. And this time, I remember, I was dressing all black because somebody was um flirted with me a little bit i'm gonna say ts ts little kendra was flirting with me a little bit or i took it as flirtation allegedly that's how i took it and she was like oh you must be oliver's bodyguard and that was my first time speaking to ts little kendra i love like, kendra this lady so I, like funny me. I love that girl so much i love her so much she was like oh you must be oliver's bodyguard. i said oliver doesn't need a bodyguard <laughs> <laughs> Kendra is a key, I'm telling you. Kendra is by the way. I love that lady so freaking much. It's so funny. <laughs> That's one person I'm so glad I met on this uh, on this platform because that is one funny lady. Period. Yeah, oh. I think Troy's gonna let me in, child. We won't. <laughs> Next scene. Little bitch bomb is huffing and puffing about how he doesn't like me as if I give a fuck. I know you're in the middle of one of your little manic episodes, but maybe you need to go and visit your therapist and come back and try this again. Okay. Oh. I don't know the specific scene, but I do know that it's Andre the one over there on Chase of LA. I like Andre. And he was I like Andre. The like rich Andre. bomb. Yeah, he was getting into a rich bomb. Let's roll with it. Bomb is huffing and puffing about how he doesn't like me as if I give a fuck. I know you're in the middle of one of your little manic episodes, but maybe you need to go and visit your therapist and come back and try this again. Wow. Baby, one thing about Miss Andre, Miss Andre reads down. I can't, I can't worry about it. I, I want to sit in the room. Andre, I want to sit in the room and we're going to have a reading session. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But I, you know, I've never met him. I, I think the, I've never met him in my life. This is Cup, y'all. I've never met him in my life, but he is, you know, you meet some people who you can say, okay, that 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 shady boots. And then you meet some people who's like, yes, that was a read. Andre gives me that, yes, that's the read. And I would love to have a friendly read competition with him. I think he's amazing. I like yeah, him. I love Andre Dan. I think he's I think he's hilarious. I don't like to play about the mania, the mania and the um the the, the counselor, the therapist now. It's just a little too much. 
but I love. Oh, there, baby, there is not one thing about it. You must be not be from the south, baby, because baby, one thing about a read, that's all they talking about. Oh, Nicki Minaj should have said what she said in her song, girl, baby. When it's time to read it, you know, he you go to hell. I'm coming for the jugular. You going to hell? To hell, all the way down. Yes, and it's gonna be real hot down there. Well, Travis, you better get your life right. Baby. <laughs> Travis, I'll just find you some drip free foundation, you was, baby. How you was flushing that brush across your face. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Y'all was messy. Mm-mm. <laughs> Anywho, y'all, it's getting a little hot over here. But guess what? We're going to take another commercial break because we got some funny videos. Don't y'all go down well. We'll be right back with more me and the group chat. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> right, guys, listen, we're back. Listen, we're up to the, you know, the best part. You know, they, they give me the little roll, but I get the biggest chat. So I'm okay with it. Anyway, listen, we're up to the funny videos. And so let's talk about it. Let's see what we got for y'all this week. Roll clip number one is either gonna be this way or this way. That way. Other way. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm a wheel of fortune. Clip one. Okay, Bella. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Legs. Legs. Oh my god. That's a chunk. Legs. Come on, baby. We'll take you and I care. <laughs> we'll take you and I care. <laughs> That's how they be flying on the highway on 20. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the wagon that's going to take on them? <laughs> no, listen, y'all. The impact to the tree and the fence is crazy. But see, when you be too extra, that's what happens when you be too extra. That right there is just, that was just too much. He should have ran through that damn fence. Y'all oh, ever had? Um, oh my God, I feel so bad. <laughs> y'all ever had this video? George, I know you from the country. Uh, y'all ever had deer sausage before? Uh, baby, that's yes. scared me because once I would have saw the deer, baby. What, uh, at this point, I, I don't want you to struggle in life. So let's just go ahead and have deer bacon, deer sausage, deer burgers, the, yeah. deer, Let me order salad, deer. Fries, dear, just dear as the hell out at this point. And that's why I like y'all being some southern country folk. Because let me tell y'all a quick story real quick. Because my daddy one night hit a deer coming home. He messed up the car. He got him out the side of the street. Once he was dead, put him in the trunk, drove him back to my uncle's house. And they cleaned him on up and made him some food. Yes, God. I'm gonna say. Right. <laughs> now, listen, some deer sausage. Now, it have you feeling like you got a hot, 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 baby. Like you got some. Present to deliver on Christmas morning because you grew off the red nosed reindeer. Uh -huh. that's, yeah, that's some good meat. That's some good meat, there. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. All right, George, back to you. <laughs> Play video number two. I'm man driving sideways, bro. Yo, what's going what on? What the hell? What's going on with my man right here? Oh. <laughs> It's hey, amazing. yo, he drifted down. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yo, what's up with old boy? Baby, this is limit. Hey, yo. <laughs> so old boy is it the tiger or is it the road? A lemon. A lemon. He need a lineman. He need a... He's on the final red morning. If you late one more time, that's your job. And he said the hell with it. I'm... I'm going to pull over. What? That is dangerous. Very much so. Look at him using the turn signal, baby. You ain't going that way. <laughs> you turning. You constantly turning at this point, baby. You don't even need the turn signal. Oh, I mean, yeah. how do you pull somebody over like this? What do you say? <laughs> the wheels cross sided. <laughs> okay, you got me looking like, damn, is it me or my eye? Okay. No, y'all, as soon as it came up, I was like, wait, me, what is going on? He got that from a buy here, pay here, honey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he got it on a car. It's a car that has to be 20. That's a car in a car right there, baby, pay it for <laughs> <laughs> That's a drive off the lot. That's a drive off the lot tag yeah. car right okay. there. Oh, and my God. God. That's best. All right, guys, and we have one more for you. Roll it. Other way. What can I possibly do to him? And I'm in handcuffs. Like, be real. Man, come on. Like, you think I'm gonna go to jump and spitting at him? I got more to lose spitting at him 
It was 15 minutes and he still ain't even know why I'm in handcuffs. said, what can I possibly do? And he intoxicated and come on, where can I go? Where can I go? Man, I'm on five two. Be real. Be real. Be real. Be real. Be real. <laughs> you don't slut bag. You want your shit poked tomorrow? You don't have a fucking virginity. Yeah, it was the walk off for me. No, it was the walk for me. It was the where I'ma go, where I'ma go, <laughs> where I'ma go. Then it was the be real, be real, be real. And then it's the lady come out. I know, I don't know if she was homeless or whatever, but girl, you have no virginity. I said, oh, okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you want to step back, flat because you have no fucking virginity, like girl. I, is she black or is she white? I don't know. Maybe she's a Puerto Rican. Or mixed biracial, but mm-hmm. I ain't gonna hold you. She, baby, she was wearing them. She was wearing them. She was wearing that black. Yeah, she's wearing. Yeah, George, she was shaped just like. And Travis, so I can see you in a pair of boots just like that. Baby, baby. I can't walk in that. I'm sorry. I don't know if she's auditioning for Zeus Network for the baddies or what, but I didn't find it funny. <laughs> you know what, Travis? I think this is the second time I agree with you tonight, and I think that that deserves some type of celebration. You know what? Both of y'all can go to sleep. I enjoyed it thoroughly, actually. Thank you. You see, we get to my segments, y'all all want to be downers. But then when y'all on y'all segments and on y'all soapboxes, y'all want me to entertain and respond. See, I don't like that. And I'm starting to feel, I'm starting <laughs> to feel that there's some bias here in this group. And if I need to go back to the table to, re- to renegotiate my contract and bring on a fifth host that I can work in, um, in, in solidarity with... <laughs> <laughs> that yes. then I, I, in you, I will do just that um, because Travis, I'm not going to be disrespected on this show Travis does he have the power to do so my love Travis don't even have no power um no oh, <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> you know what best thing you can do George oh, right now the best thing you can do right now is put your pants on because I'm coming to pick you up in five minutes you know what at this point good night Tro- uh, Troy back to you Dario dropped me. No, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, 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 you see what I'm talking about? The ass 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 no respect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Now, tonight was a great night. Listen, we had a little combat back and forth. We had some funny videos. We got to talk about some scenes from Chasing Reality. Listen, I had a great time tonight with you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in to another week of The Root Chat here with none other than myself, George, Darius, and Travis. Listen, make sure you leave your comments, like, and subscribe to our show. Share it. Let your friends know about it because we are up here doing what we do. I always remember every Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m., the group chat is back, baby. George, take us out. What the is group it? chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Promote your business during the episodes of the group chat. Email us at info at myChasingReality.com.